Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today's video is something a bit different. It was my first ever trip to Scotland and I was there actually as a cast member for TV chef and presenter Mike Robinson's show Farming the Wild. So this show is all about sustainable hunter gathering and bringing that high quality food into Michelin star quality recipes by Mike. It was a real privilege to be part of the show and to feature on this episode in Scotland. What I'm about to share with you is some behind the scenes footage basically that I captured. I was also very fortunate to get some of the actual footage um, to share with you in this video. Um, before we do get into it, if you do want to see Farming the Wild, you can stream it on My Outdoor TV. Um, I'll put some links in the description. The actual show is aired in America on the Outdoor Channel, but you can watch it as well. I'll put some details in the description. Um, but without further ado, this is what happened. After what was an eight hour drive, a two hour ferry, I finally made it to Scotland last night. Also driving through a field to get here. And today, meeting up with Mike, we're taking dreadnoughts out and going after some jumbo scallops to start with. The scenery here is unbelievable. It's a real privilege to be here. Go the boys. Whammy. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, of course I will. About to hit the water, oh we're just God, waiting on Joe, and we're going to be heading out there. So this is the beach, we put all our gear on, have a cook up later and now we're going to get back on the on the boat, back on Dreadnought and head round to the spot, see what we can find. I just can't, words fail me. I had never before been in a situation where I could spot the scallops from the surface. The bottom was covered in a massive variety of beautiful seaweeds, but wherever you had a sand patch, you had scallops. The sand was really soft, which meant the scallops were well buried so you needed a really keen eye to spot them. As a chef, Mike may have been more enamoured by this than me. Not too hot, not too savvy. As Mike produced a top quality recipe with fresh scallops, I couldn't resist capturing some of the stunning scenery with my drone. With the first cook-up filmed for the show, we returned to the launch site, but before reaching it, I was able to do a couple of dives on one of the many wrecks strewn on the seabed here. We've had an absolutely incredible day at the sea here. 
where we started off going after the scallops. And as you can see, they're absolutely huge. And on the way back in, a quick, a quick dive onto a wreck where there were some beautiful gold bars. Hold them up as a pair, Joe. <laughs> so that's uh, what we've got so far. I'm going to do more of it tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mike. I'm just going to make my way down to the beach, have a quick look. See what wildlife can be found. I think the tide's out. Just walking back to the hut along this beach and I cannot believe the size of the cockles at my feet here. Look at this. These are absolutely jumbo. And as you can see, they're just nestled in this mixed ground here. There's another one. There's another one. I'm just picking up handfuls of huge cockles. After a spot of morning foraging, it was time for the second day's adventure. It's safe to say we couldn't have picked better conditions, and I was excited to help Mike in the water with some basic technique for spearfishing. So today's plan is to go out with a guide off the south of the island and hit several different marks, wrecks, reefs, pinnacles, might even pull some lobster pots, and I'm really I'm really hopeful as well Mike can shoot his first fish, he's, he's diving really well. These rocks, they look insane. And if there's kelp around them, which there always seems to be here, then we should be able to find the pollock of our dreams. Mm. Octopus maybe? How would, you, how would you like to cook it? I hate to say it, but we, I would really fancy some fish and chips, Joe. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> maybe a very light, fluffy tempura style batter. Crispy, crunchy. Oh. Fragrant with sweet pollock inside, dipped in a garlicky aioli. Ooh. Yeah. Very nice. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice gut weed on the uh, slip down there. It's going to be very slippery. It's <laughs> pretty dicey, doesn't it? Um, yeah. She, she starts so well. Yeah, it's a good boat. Old but good, Joe. Old but good, it's like me. Uh, we've got one tank here, and I've got BCD and everything else. Are those pink flippers in there? No. We've got some. We've got lots of flippers. Uh, we weren't fine yet. Yeah. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Whilst there were promising numbers of bait fish around, we were actually struggling to see fish of any size. Nevertheless, we had a spectacular wreck to explore, the side of which was covered in beautiful sessile life forms. Nice 
nice rack here. Yes, like no fish, no. While Mike and I hadn't seen anything shootable, Declan, our host for the week, had found a great pollock in the wreck. It's shooting. Finally. Lovely pollock, well done. Around oh. that bit of weed. In the wreck, underneath the wreck. Oh, fantastic, so quite shallow. Well, I didn't know, it felt, felt deep enough to me. <laughs> yeah, good for you, mate, well done. Oh. With this success, we decided to go and pull some lobster pots. So we're um, we're uh, on the sort of south east of the island now. Um, we're going to pull some creels, um, maybe find a lobster or a crab, um, and have a look for some scallops and maybe a fish too. First haul and a very much unexpected critter comes to the surface. Yeah, squad. We really want an octopus. Oh, there you go. Oh, is it that's so exciting? That's actually quite a good eating there size. Go. Octopus. Here we go. Female. Serious whelk, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Have you ever eaten whelks? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You like them? Yeah, they're alright. Yep. Boil them up them. and. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another velvet. We'll go and lift another one, see if we can. Once again, all the seafood was brought back to the kitchen for a cook up, which can be seen on the show. That's right, I got there in time. On day three, we woke to one of the most beautiful sunrises ever. The sun rising over the very hills we would be stalking deer on later that day. Do we need to be yeah. downwind of this breeze? Or? Yeah, so we want the breeze hitting us in the face when we're stalking yeah. the deer, so they can't smell us. Great. Great. As we set off, Mike began educating me on the ways of deer and deer management. The different species, red deer and seeker deer, are hinds and stags and calves. Fine. All the other steers are bucks and does and fawns. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Okay, so deer stalking is extremely selective, only taking certain animals to improve the health of the deer population and surrounding environment. After an hour of walking this beautiful landscape, we spot an animal that could be a good coal stag. If you see right in the dip as the fence disappears, yeah, he's just he's, put his he's below literally the... just he's right just in the below. middle. Of where you can't see the fence. I can way. see his back. <laughs> yep, I can see his just the tip of his antlers. I can't see. I can't see. He's got bro tines, uh, bay tines. How confident you are you about that being a cull stag? Uh, I mean, I'd say I'm 75% that it's going to be. A, it's a good cull stag. You just need to be a bit closer him to tell exactly. And aging him the way he's holding his head. Yeah, he's holding his head quite low. So he's going to be on the clock face method. He's he's in the end third of his life. I mean, that stag he's with is an absolute corker Isn't of a stag. Isn't beautiful? Younger stag. Mm -hmm. We needed to get closer to the animal to be 100% sure it was good to be cold. A fence line provided the cover we needed to crawl 100 yards nearer. After about an hour of crawling, I was able to finally take a position to make the shot. Well, 
There were two stags resting in the heather across from us. One was the coal stag. You can see here one stag stands up to stretch his legs, but this animal has to be left well alone. It's now just a waiting game until the correct stag gets to his feet. It's a hot day with temperatures in the high 20s and he isn't up for much activity as the sun is high in the sky. A little persuasion is eventually used as a last resort to get the deer to its feet. It's a gamble as banging the fence could send both deer galloping on their way. Five hours. Five hours. <laughs> it's a long way to put there. And that for me just had made it all the more important. It was done properly. Bro, B, tree, tops, missing a, a betine on his right hand side. This one here is actually reduced from his bro tine, which would indicate he's older. For five hours crawling through you know, ditches, marsh, patiently waiting for another three hours, and finally to get the, well, what is a good shot? It's a very good shot, mate, honestly. Well, you've wasted almost nothing on that animal. Yeah. The whole thing's usable. It has no adrenaline because it was fast asleep, then it got up and then, you know. The thing I'm so thankful for, is, though, is to be with, you know, experts who, who were, you know, able to tell me, look, wait. Yeah. That was, wait. That, 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 <laughs> that, those five minutes felt like an hour, it was probably five minutes. Yep. saying just wait 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 it's so interesting what adrenaline what what adrenaline and the fear of getting it wrong does to you yeah. when you're you know you i could see you were calm as a custard for three hours looking at that and then he got up and you 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 told me i'm shaking you know yeah. Yeah. it's called buck fever Thank you very much for watching this video everyone. Um, obviously lots and lots of the action was not in my video, I was just filming certain parts on my GoPro on the whole. Um, but yeah, it was an extraordinary opportunity to hunt my first deer. Um, I actually purchased that deer off the estate and I've been enjoying it with my family um, and I still have some left. It's an absolutely delicious meat if you ever have the opportunity to try it and you haven't, I would strongly recommend it. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyable time in Scotland. Um, I hope I can get back there soon because it's an absolutely beautiful area. Um, amazing hunting, foraging, spearfishing. Um, 
and please do let me know what you thought of the video if you enjoyed it as usual I really appreciate your comments and love looking through them so um, yeah please drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video um, but other than that hope everyone is staying safe and well and looking forward to a good spearfishing season to come thank you very much everybody